Coming back at you, Sacred Mountain, living with CTE in the Wild West. This is a fun chapter. This is the beginning of Sacred Mountain. This is where it all began right here. Uh, and like everything that's happened in our lives for the past 20 years, it's freaking crazy. While working at the county, the local main real estate gal, Kathy, who was also a massage client of Wendy's, had inquired if I wanted to hang my newly acquired broker's license with them. The county didn't allow me to hang my license with her and work as a government agent. So that was just put on the back burner. After Wendy had finished teaching at massage school during the JJJ, JJ days, she uh, started her own massage and wellness place in Twin Oaks, Sacred Mountain Massage and Wellness. My parents decided that they would help us throw a super nice fancy grand opening party for people to come and enjoy some good company, have some refreshments, check out the new place, and how she decorated the massage room in her front entrance. A local gal, Barbara, who was a friend of Wendy, offered to bring her some handmade jewelry to set up a booth for people to check out. It was a real nice uh, gesture, we thought. The open house was going uh, quite well. We had met a lot of people, and everyone was super impressed with how nice the shop was. It wasn't too long until the uh, elderly current broker of Stage Stop Ranch and Land showed up with his wife. Actually, I didn't even know if Al was with Joanne or not because of the complete spectacle that happened. Barbara at her jewelry stand used this as an opportunity to hand Joanne papers and said with a huge smile on her face, "You're served." Barbara must have assumed it would have turned into a com Barbara must have assumed it wouldn't have turned into a complete screaming match. There were some heated words back and forth between women. Tina, one of Wendy's massage students who does female boxing, got bo both women to shut up and leave. The party probably wouldn't have, would have went longer, but that killed the mood. A perfect introduction to life in Twin Oaks, or business in Twin Oaks, I mean. Wendy was uh, an instant hit, becoming third business in town. Three businesses in town, that's it. It is something to say that Wendy was as booked as she was over the years being such a small community because of Winnie's massage work and her social skills we got to know everyone real quick and yes we're still cool to this day with with Barbara good person unfortunately Kathy passed away about a year before I entered my career at the county ended my career at the county she was a real nice gal her husband Tom was now running the real estate company I have I really didn't have any desire to sell anything after my experience with JJ my father decided that we could do a house flip together to get me off my feet in the house flipping business. Super great guy. We found a house in Tehachapi that was going up for auction. We went to the auction and picked it up for 110000 The only thing went, uh, the only thing wrong with it was that it had an underproof sunroom which made it unfinanceable. The original plan was to just do a lipstick remodel, tear off the sunroom and make it financeable. We all worked so hard and ended up spending way too much money. I think we spent 60k on the remodel. We upgraded everything. One of the big to-dos was the yard. My old man was really into the manicured look from the 80s. So it was nice and clean, but a ton of maintenance and water consumption. The home had a large lawn in the back with a large planter bed. The front had a smaller version of the back large with a large planter bed. You would read later about the septic problems we, we later had. The home didn't sell for the high price we needed to get the profit for over a year. We to get a profit for over a year. That was one year of lawn maintenance for me with dealing with a renter. I'm not complaining by any means. However, it was a bitch every week to battle the weeds in the planter beds. I think Roundup is only toxic to humans because it didn't do shit on the weeds. In fact, every time I used it and I really used it even concentrated, the weeds would come back stronger. By the time the house sold, they were more like a Roundup impervious ground cover. I stopped using the, the crap long before we discovered how bad it was for people. After a year or so on the market, went up a quite a bit and the home was sold. The buyer got one hell of a nice place with granite, threw out, tumbled marble, backsplash, new fireplace, new carpet, new paint, new yard, new shower, toilet, lights, fixtures, and a bit more. What a place. During that year we were, th we were working on flipping that house, we decided it would be cool for me to have an office for my house flipping projects. This is where the fun starts. We were able to negotiate a third office with the landlord for a good rate and he approved my house flipping business to go in there. At the time, uh, there was Wendy's Sacred Mountain Massage and Wellness, the unnamed sheriff's office, the unmanned sheriff's office, and, and uh, Twin Cock Realty. And that's a, one of those I changed the name a little bit. <laughs> Or a better name for the book would probably Double Rooster Realty. 
So Double Rooster, uh, Double Rooster was a competitor of Stage Top Ranch and Land, which was right next door. It wasn't a conflict, however, because I had no interest in selling anything except my own flips at the time. Understood that there was no conflict. The owner of the building understood there was no conflict. How about the Double Rooster Realty was not so happy over it? I placed my sign on the fence that said Sacred Mountain Properties Construction, Investment, and Design. Nowhere on the sign did it say real estate or real estate sales. The next day we got a voicemail message from Pino saying he was going to effing kill you and sue you for a million dollars. This dumbass leave a message on our answer machine. The day after that, which was been 48 hours from the sign hanging, we were in the office and the double rooster crew showed up, both Lady Broker and her husband, Pino. <laughs> Pino was a small man in size, but a real uh, full of himself, obviously. Why are, little men, why are little men so feisty? Maybe they should have something, maybe they have something to prove. He showed up with uh, a handheld video recorder yelling. They rolled onto the gravel parking lot in a full-size white pickup truck. I think it was a Dodge and it actually, it, and it's actually strange that I don't recall the make due to what happened. They pulled in and he was hanging out on the driver's window yelling. I could see through the front window as they drove in, so I headed outside. He started yelling at me. He would say, F you, I'm going to sue you. Then he raised his video camera to get a response from me. Then, fuck you, fat ass, which uh, enraged me. I, I may be 340 pound, 320 pounds, but I'm an athlete. But that camera stopped me in my tracks. Wendy had me go back inside to call our local Sheriff John again, and I was about to do something stupid as I was about to do something stupid. I hate situations like this where you have the ability to put someone in the hospital or under the ground with your bare hands, but you can't do anything because jail sucks. Yeah, a few years later, I stopped someone with a gun confronting me with the power of my, my camera phone. Wonder if my subconscious remembered this event. I was back inside for just a moment and I could hear the yelling back and forth. I was on the phone with the local sheriff, John Nobles, leaving a message. With the yelling, I could hear him calling Wendy a bitch. I headed back outside and this little guy was being super aggressive with Wendy. As soon as I went inside, I decided, decided to up his, he decided to up his verbal attacks. I was now standing behind Wendy and after he was threatening to kick her ass, she said with both hands out, motioned out to her, come on then, little man. He started to open his door and with his wife and his wife, the broker, who was a nice enough person and also understood that there was no competition, grabbed his arm to keep him from coming at Wendy. He then turned back toward her in the passenger's seat and started slugging her in the stomach, saying, you shut up, you are my property. Wendy said to me loudly, did you see that? He just hit his wife. Then my beautiful lady, who is not property at all, <laughs> but, I, but I'd be hers anytime. Yelled to him. <coughs> Did you get that on camera? He then replied, F you, uh, the C word, yeah? That was it for me. As always, there is a line. If he would have come uh, after my wife, he would have found out I was right behind her real quick. But when he said the word, that was the deal breaker for me. During the exchange, Pino had turned the truck around so that he was facing the exit and was a good 20 feet back from the front door. I headed into the parking lot and after I got about three steps into the gravel, he floored it. He knew he flo I, we knew he floored it because the tires shot gravel for a good 15 feet. He hit me full throttle. I could see the truck coming and couldn't do anything except hop and put my hands out. The impact threw me back far enough that he didn't run over me as he turned out of the parking lot. I was on the ground hysterically laughing, filled with adrenaline, excitement, as well as relief. I yelled out, got you now! <laughs> when I looked back at Wendy, she was out uh, busy writing down the license plate number on her hand. I was fine, but we decided to call the sheriff on duty to come out to take a report. It's silly at the time there was a sheriff transfer station in the office, but it was unmanned, so it took a lo a, the law over an hour to get there. When he did arrive, I let him know that I was okay and not hurt. I also let him know that I didn't want to press charges. Wendy then interjected that we did need a report taken of the incident and gave me an, a pretty hard look. As to say, shut up, you were hit by a truck. <laughs> As the sheriffs examined the parking lot, it was real easy to see the long truck tracks and my impression where I landed. He then asked me the pivotal question, which at the time I had no idea this question was the big deal. 
The sheriff then asked, where on the front of the truck did he hit me? The sheriff alluded that I was probably hit by the edge of the truck as they were leaving. And then I replied, no, I was right in the middle of the bumper. I let him know that if I didn't jump back, I would have gone under the truck. I was then told if you're between the lights when you're hit, then it's a crime. But if you're hit and the lights are outside, if hit from the lights out, it's only an accident. It was clear that he is aiming for me and intentionally hit me. The sheriff took the info down and since I wasn't looking to press charges, the sheriff wasn't getting ready to, the sheriff was getting ready to leave. Wendy happened to start uh, filling in the details of why in a discussion about a possible restraining order. When she got to the part in the story where Pino started slugging his wife, the sheriff suddenly changed his attitude. He wanted to know where Pino lived and all the details. We let him know that we had no issue with his wife, the broker, and I think we even, Wendy even offered to help her testify if she wanted to leave him. The officer was intent on going, uh, getting over to Pino. I'm sure to make sure she was okay. There's a difference between a 320 pound man and a woman in a violent situation, and I'm glad there is. We heard enough, th we heard through the community that the sheriff went to their home, and there was signs that he had hit her. He, we also heard that she refused to leave him or press any charges. All of this was thought, was thought, was through the grapevine, so not sure how much is true about the sheriff meeting with Pino. I do know that after the sheriff refused to leave or press charges, the sheriff arrested Pino on his own accord for attempted murder of me. He had to spend the night in jail. Ha ha ha, jail sucks. <laughs> after the encounter the next day or so, Wendy looked into his training order and also informed our landlord of the incident. I learned landlord asked us to leave, not double... Uh, double rooster reality. This was an absolute bullshit move by the landlord. Wendy's massage business was there two years before double rooster. I wonder if Pino threatened the landlord with litigation or camera and cuss words. Probably did. Literally, while I'm ta taking my signs down, we were approached by Tom, which was Cassie's husband who knew who was now running Sage Stop Ranch Land, the main real estate company, and broker and Pino's competition. He suggested we move over with him. I could be the broker of record and Weedy could do massage in the back. Apparently the broker got his start with Stage Top and then apparently the broker got her start with Stage Top and then went out on her own after a disagreement. She then opened up a rooster realty and moved into our building. We did the move, had no had really no other choice. The space for Winnie's massage was really too small and she was not happy being over there, but it worked for a time. While we were moving in, we were informed by the county that everyone involved in alteration would have to give up firearms to the sheriff. There is no way that was going to happen, not with response time as an hour and a half, only after you do serious convincing on the phone to even get the sheriff out. We rescinded the application for a restraining order. I don't know if it was the cancellation of the order, pressure from the community, or fear or shame that was driving Pino and the broker. Double Rooster then closed their offer shortly after we moved, fire sold their ranch, and I have heard move to the coast. <clears throat> what was really stupid is we were forced to move in favor of Double Rooster, and then the rooster fled. Wendy spent a year looking at the empty building she had to rent with all her improvements just sitting empty. After a year, Wendy came to a new ag agreement with the landlord, and she moved back. I spent a couple more months at Stage Stop. That relationship and business closed for a few reasons. The raised means is that it was being offered to sale for me for more, far more than I could pay if I wanted to. And then it turned into I would buy it and Tommy, Tom's son, would still own half. The final culmination, of course, was that after I wasn't willing to pay, my lifestyle and income stream was then questioned. All of that being said, real estate was dead and none of us were making money. When I, start, when I started at Stage Stop, I was told there was no home loans in the area available because there was no comps. That was true, and I changed that for everyone with a $300,000 sale of a VA ranch. We said that I had to go for it, even with everyone in our office saying it wouldn't work. When the VA appraiser arrived, I had already read the appraisal rules, and speaking with him, I was able to get the appraiser to take comps from 30 miles away. Woo! We're very rural, so it actually makes sense, although it sounds excessive. That deal worked, and that slowly springboarded the entire community. Loans have been going off since then in the community for over 15 years now. I worked with old Al and old Jim, 
Not a whole lot to say about that time except a whole lot of office hours with not too many customers. When Tom suggested I when Tom suggested I must be doing something illegal to survive because we weren't making any money, that immediately ended our business relationship. So stupid, I had Wendy doing massage full time and I always have the support of my parents. Illegal income, what bullshit. I helped put the sheriff's training facility in for earlier chapter. I then moved back over with Wendy and again put my sign for Saker Mountain Properties because of Tehachapi Flip took so long. <clears throat> it just wasn't profitable enough. The powers that be and circumstances now had me selling ranches and acreage full time for myself. After being open about a month, stage stop closed. Al went to work for me at Sacred Mountain. Stage stop closed the doors and Tom sold his ranch and moved out of state somewhere. Not really sure. Sacred Mountain Properties, a professional real estate company, the legacy of sustainable ranch living. And that's on our advertising. Uh, here's a nice picture of my office sign I used to have uh, with a rainbow hitting it. Thanks for joining me on that chapter.